Um, we are some housekeeping first. So uh, just a reminder that we will be recording this call. Um, OK, so that everybody can listen to it that could attend this afternoon, like they wanted to be out in the sun or something. So they decided <laughs> to do something else or you can refer to it if you need to. Also within the notes, Pam is the excellent note taker and she's going to put links in here for us for anything that um, like temp charts or anything that we're talking about. We'll put some links in there so you'll get the links later. Um, and reminder to mute yourself, please, unless if you're talking and um, it's up to you to unmute yourself and just let us know. And remember, this is called a peer sharing call. So we really need you to speak up and talk about any struggles or any victories or any you know investigation that you did we really need you to share with each other because you know somebody maybe is having a struggle that you had and you've learned how to correct that by now so that is why we have these peer sharing calls we can give you some information but it really comes alive when you guys share with each other so i appreciate everybody showing up so the reason why we're having this meeting is not that we shouldn't talk about temps on a regular basis but we sent out an end of the year report last, well, it was probably January or December, and asking what your temps looked like. And unfortunately, we uh, saw some problems with the temps that were coming back. So one big problem was the end of the home delivered meal routes, okay? So everybody was not at 140. There were some people that did, but I will tell you a lot of people are struggling with this. So if you think you are the only one, you are not. Um, some people like one route would be good, but the other route wouldn't. So, and there's different reasons for that. You all have different operations. Some have caterers, some do their own cooking, some have really long routes, some have shorter routes, some you know don't have money for equipment, all sorts of different things. Some have you know volunteer turnover all the time. So whatever your struggle is, it's OK to share that because somebody else may have had that same struggle and learned how to deal with that better. Um, so the end of row temps is a big one that we need to look at. We need to get those temps at 140 at the end, OK? And 41 or lower for the cold. Other thing that we saw in a lot of um, places is people both on home delivered and in, in the kitchens is not taking cold temps. So if you had pudding, if you had um, some kind of dessert that was cold and sometimes milk, uh, we saw a lot of temps being skipped, sometimes with lettuce, sometimes with cold slaw, sometimes potato salad. And sometimes there's one time where the, the whole meal was like, I don't know, chicken salad or something. So they didn't take any temps because it was a cold meal. So we uh, rule of thumb is hot food, hot, cold food, cold. OK, so we really absolutely need to see these temperatures happen on cold food and hot food. OK, so if you have any problems there too, um, we have many things um, that different people are doing that work for them. So maybe one of these will work for you. And just some people have problems with arrival temps. And I was just talking with someone this morning um, from their caterer to their own um, establishment. They saw a big change in temperatures there. So everybody's struggling with a little something different. So don't be afraid to just um, speak up and let us know what yours are, because maybe we can go through this with you and find out how we can help. Um, and again, we're here for you anytime. So we really need these temps to be good so that we can go on and work on other things. All right, um, I think that's just about, those were the main things about those documents. Uh, temperatures, there's just nothing more important. You'll hear that over and over. So please make sure that you do that. And I'm sorry, I'm sitting in my car. Um, so <laughs> if you hear the car next door started up, so hopefully they'll be leaving soon so you can hear me better. Um, all right, so next thing, uh, the peer sharing today is we're going to look at some equipments. If I can get my screen up, there we go. And please let me know if you're not hearing me or seeing me well enough. So what we have here is some pictures that other people, equipment they have used that have worked well. So this one here, does everybody see it now? Yep. 
OK, good. Thank you. That's all I need to know that's working. So that is um, my favorite container ever. OK, so it's orange and yellow and you fit seven Oliver trays on each side and you can see at the top it's got a plug and that plugs into the cigarette lighter, right? And it was just a godsend. It after we bought those, we never had a problem with the end of route temperatures um, as long as the food was arrive, arriving hot. Not only, oh thank goodness that car is gone. <laughs> not only did uh, the temperatures come uh, stay, but sometimes they actually went up. So and we were um, one of our other peer sharing calls. Somebody said that they had a very long route and it held temps that whole time. Um, one of the disadvantages is using this is they're very expensive. And the, the other thing is it takes them a while to get them to you. It can take months. Is who else uses this container? Oh, there's something in chat. Um, and again, okay. I remind you, make sure that you, if you feel comfortable putting in chat, um, I am, this is Jean and I am monitoring it. Uh, Darby, Lori, did you use more than one of these in your vehicles if you had more than 14 meals on the route? And Michelle from Bayfield County uses these as well. So the question is, did you use more than one of these in your vehicles if you had more than 14 meals on the route? Absolutely. Yeah, we did. We had we had two in every in every car and we did not problems with fusing. And then sometimes we had to use one of our old bags also because sometimes there were days where we had more. And of course we had our bags in there that also had the other cold items and then also frozen items. So it could be a crowded car some days, you know, on Fridays when we delivered weekend meals. But yeah, we never had a problem with that. Yes, we did have to use more than one in almost every vehicle. So and we did have like once in a while we'd have a spill, few extra ones. So then we would put those just in a regular bag with some heat stuff in it and they would be the first ones we would deliver. And Lori, um, Barb said she just ordered one and won't get here until June. So probably just like everything else on the planet, there's a delay um, with shipping. Kim, <coughs> excuse me. Kim Losey wanted to know where they came from and what the cost was. Um, Michelle, our drivers plug in three to four at a time because our routes are very, very long. We've had some fuse trouble, so just an FYI. But I think these were these from Scott in at Ho Chunk. These pictures. Uh, no, not okay. this first one. Okay. Not the first one. So this, this, uh, the yellow container, the yellow and orange that uh, contained the seven. Uh, Kim S. Meals on Wheel store. And um, unfortunately, when I bought them in Winnebago County, they were around 600 and some dollars, almost 700. They're up to about $1,000 a piece now. Um, and I will just say that that's a lot of money. I understand that. Um, some people are talking about maybe just buying some for like their longer routes and then buying a few more next year. So something to think about. Um, but I will tell you, never had a problem with temps again after that, never. And they last, our caterer actually had, and they said they were going on over 10 years and they're still working fine. Once in a while we have a problem with the core, but um, I, I think out of Gamey County also uses these. Uh, they're, they're very durable and they last forever. So you won't have to be rebuying them every few years. But this other picture, um, Jean is from Scott, and I don't know what that the cord. What do you know what that one is? No, I can't see. I can't see. It's kind of small. Um, I just want to get caught up on the chat here real quick. Nutrisystems okay. Meals on Wheels stores sell these boxes, and they have been great to work with. Um, Michelle said that the cost right now is nine sixty, and that was as of last June twenty twenty. Um, Jennifer would like to know how heavy. Oh, good question. How heavy are they when the food is in them? I is Scott um, on? Not, I don't think he's on. OK, so. OK, so they are heavy when they're full, but this is what we did. Um, when the food came in from the caterer, we would fill up the boxes, plug them in and wait for the drivers to come in and then we would have carts. And two drivers would lift them up onto the cart, take it out to the car, trans people transfer it into the back of the car, and then the driver doesn't have to, to lift them or move them again 
until they've emptied all the meals out and then it's empty when they bring it back in. So, and uh, just a reminder there too, along with a lot of other equipment, um, we would bring them in at night so they weren't like freezing cold as you're trying to heat them. So you can plug them in beforehand though, so they're nice and heated up for your meals. So they and stay nice and warm. So are Cindy they heavy? Yes, but you around that. Cindy would like to know where do you plug them in before they get into a vehicle? Um, they have both an AC and DC plug, so you can plug them into any outlet. Thank you. Okay. So I will move down a little bit more. And these, these are all from Scott too. So these are those soup container. Um, I don't know if he's on or if you can speak to these soup containers that he bought. Yeah, he used these and I'm sorry, I can't see them. Um, I believe he used these to, to actually store um, soups. And Scott, are you on by chance? He. Scott did a little spiel on our um, peer sharing call last couple. I think it was two Fridays ago, maybe or maybe it was last Friday. Um, but yeah, these are the bags that he ordered and he loves these. These are the temp tech bags. Um, and I believe there's there. We can add the to the notes, the, the website for that as well. Just giving you another um, another option. But you can see, I think from the first picture, um, is kind of how he's storing that in the bag and the depth of it. So with that bag, he was able to transport soup and chili quite well and keep it at, at very safe temperatures. OK, that's good. Thank you. So um, and Pam, I know you're taking notes, but um, I don't have a picture of that here hot, but do you know who that was from and how that is used? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I could share my screen really quick, Lori. I do have a picture if you want. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I'll try. That'd be great. I will try that to share my sense. screen. Okay. Good. That will be my goal. Um, let's <laughs> see. Uh, and while I'm trying to share my screen, um, Sue in Vilas County, she worked with Lynn's Catering, and Lynn discovered this um, equipment from Temp um, Sterno. One second, brief hold. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Sugar plum. Uh, I don't know if I can share my screen, but I'll talk to it. It's. Uh, I'm gonna stop trying to share my screen um, because bad things are happening. But um, yes, yeah, so it is from Sterno Delivery. It's called the Heater Hot Plate, and it keeps your hot food hot even longer. Um, it says, I'll just read the flyer, a must have accessory for your sterno delivery insulated food carriers to help keep meals hot during delivery with longer routes. Um, it offers an additional heat source inside your um, boxes. Um, it maintains a temperature of 200 degrees for an hour. They're lightweight for ease of transporting. No cords or plugs needed to provide an on the go heat solution. Um, you heat them in a standard oven for 20 minutes at 375 or a convection oven for 10 minutes at 350. And they are from sternodelivery.com and we will add those to the notes. And Sue said that when they started using this, this is what they were having issues with of temp dropping off from the caterer to their to their meal sites. And so Lynn started using these and it was night and day. The temperatures were maintained then above 140. Thank you so much. Um, Pam, is there any other equipment that you wanted to highlight or talk about? Because I'm going to go back on mute because the garbage man is here now. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 We will send out the hot food, hot, cold food, cold handout with the notes again, but there's quite a few things on there from your peers that um, have worked. And I know uh, quite a few of you use a micro core um, units that heat up, you know, that the inserts. And then like Rhonda was saying on their last call, it's a matter of where you place those, um, that you can place more than one in a bag and kind of experiment if you want, put them on the bottom, the sides of the top. Um, and then we also talked about some of this uh, 
insulation that you could buy that's bubble wrap looking insulation and put it in two or three layers and duct tape around the edges and put that on top of your bags to force it down. Um, and Pam, there is a, a chat. Um, does any, this is Christy up in, in Portage County. Does anyone on the call use the Sterno hot plate? And if so, how do they use it? Yeah, that's Sue in Vilas County. She's the one that told me about it. So it goes right in the bags. And Sue, I don't know if you're on. Yes, I'm on. So Lynn heats it in the oven and it gets uh, to 200 degrees. And she said it is 200 degrees. And then you place it on the side of the bags. So I would imagine you could probably even do two, you know, like one on each side of, you know, in between or like on the sides of the um, your uh, Oliver containers. Um, it, and they are lightweight. They're they're not as heavy as like that, you know, the the bigger um, the plug in bags that are heavier to use because these don't plug in. So uh, it did make a difference for ours because um, we were thinking it was on our end that we were having all the problems with, but it was really on the caterers. And, and she was finding that with the plugins, because she had to bring, you know, she was bringing so many bags that she was blowing fuses in their trucks um, because she was plugging in so many bags. So this was a good alternative for her and she doesn't have to plug ours in then. Sue, so, um, just a couple of things in chat. Uh, the first thing I was thinking about when you said that too is that some of these companies I know in the the program that I was in, they would let me try one. So I would be very kind and and nice when I talked to them and ask them nicely if they could send me one because they're you know if it worked, I, great I'll order five of them or or whatever. But just I wanted to plant that seed a little bit that oh. if you want, send you one, um, you know, and and they want to get your business. So the other question here is. Um, Sue, what is your longest route that you use that for? Well, the caterer comes 25 minutes um, to our site. And then our, we don't, we have four routes and none of them are longer than an hour. So you figure the food is coming 25 minutes and then the food goes out immediately once it gets to the site another hour. So thank you yep are they too hot that somebody might burn themselves on it uh no because they're not the drivers aren't handling them because they stay on the sides of the bag they're just handling the um the oliver trays okay there's a question here in chat um just kind of throwing it out there, Barb. Uh, what kind of food containers do you all use? So um, jump right in through chat or um, speak up about wh what kind of containers you're using and how they're working. Um, Kim Losey says Oliver, Oliver. Uh, Jenny says Oliver trays, Kayla metal foil trays. Interesting. Um, Oliver, that's kind of a good thing to bring up. You know, the difference between metal foil um, packaging and then the Oliver trays. I'm, I'm interested if anybody has, uh, you know, any feelings on which one they prefer, if they've tried both. Let's see. Oliver divided trays. Oops, sorry. Oliver divided trays for hot and styrofoam for cold components. Thank you, Sabrina, for chiming in. Um, Kim, yeah, Wilson, I they, use oh, go Oliver ahead. trays. I use Oliver trays. This is Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Um, when I first started, we used metal till someone put it in the microwave and started the house on fire. Oh, jeez. Quick switch over to the other ones, I bet. Um, styrofoam currently until we can go back to returnable containers interesting all kinds of things happening in the network about what the packaging is 
and I will say that I did um, check back with somebody that all their temps were good and they weren't having any problems. And I asked her and she was using the aluminum, the metal ones, mm -hmm. and she had no temperature problems. So that was interesting. So again, maybe you want to try something different if you're having problems. And like Jean said, you know, sometimes you can get a sample from somebody and try that. Um, I know that in the Wiz Nutrition, I think it was Brown County that asked a question if anybody was using a different uh, Oliver tray for their colds. And I don't know if anybody here is, but I thought that was an interesting question. If anybody uses an Oliver tray for um, instead of, you know, styrofoam squats or whatever. Um, Kristen asking, we used to use the foil trays and it was too easy to cut your fingers. Interesting. When placing the cardboard top on and sealing, we switched to Oliver trays and everyone likes them much better. Thank you for sharing that. And um, in that vein, Dawn, I think I was talking to you earlier this week about the Oliver sealing and she said her caterer got a new sealer. Can you speak to that, Dawn? Yeah, um, she said that she got a better type of a sealer um, that was stronger. She put like that were heavier duty so that it was going to seal better. And today we had soup, and I think out of the soup there was one um, container that somebody had said that had spilled over into the other compartment. So um, she, uh, talking to her, she said that it's a heavy duty sealer, and they're checking the trays a little bit better now. Great. Um, Sabrina uh, wanted to, everybody to know in the summer when we have an entire cold meal, we will use the Oliver trays and it really just depends on the way the parts of the meal work out. Um, Michelle again, we use three compartment Oliver fiber trays, mostly with the hot foods and single compartment fiber containers for soup, <clears throat> excuse me, or cold salads and fruit. Um, Christy wanted to state 250 250 I think, for $62 is the cost of the metal tray. Anybody want to comment currently what they're paying for the Oliver tray? Doing some cost comparisons. Anybody have an idea what they're paying for those Oliver trays? And I don't, I don't honestly know the current price. I don't either. I don't know if the the price has gone up, but um, or not lately. So this is Rhonda from EDRC of Central Wisconsin. I don't have pricing information from me right now, but um, they did increase their prices three percent starting, I think, February first. Thank you, Rhonda. Oh, it looks like um, Kathy M. Uh, Oliver two compartment equals 42 cents each. Three compartment deep is 47 cents each. And thank you, Michelle. She should do some research on what she pays and will get it to us by the end of the call. Thank you so much. Um, Sabrina, we've had to be flexible with the different types, <clears throat> excuse me, different types of fiber versus plastic. Yeah, we tried the plastic for a little bit, but that was hardly sailing at all compared to what the ones we're using now are. Thank you. Oh, good point. Fiber is biodegradable. Um, Kathy M. Oliver 3 Shallow is 43 cents. Wow. Great. Wow. Good conversation about the packaging. I'm sorry, this is Dawn Jorsted from Lacrosse just joining. Um, I just popped in, but are you guys talking about the black plastic ones? Oliver trays? All of them, actually. Um, yeah, are, is that what you're Dawn? I know. Thank you for joining us. I know I emailed you earlier. Yes. Um, and if you have some time, I'd love if you could talk about some of the equipment you're using um, to currently keep safe temperatures. Yeah, absolutely. But I just noticed that we got subbed a lot with those black plastic um, and we actually refused our last shipment of them. And we have gone back to the fiber ones um, because if you freeze your meals, 
Mm -hmm. That plastic comes off of them. I don't know if that was in the conversation, but. Oh, thank you for adding that. That's a, that's a really good point. So when they were freezing then the, the plastic that was, that was attached to it was, was coming off. Correct. Okay. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to add that we learned in the last six months that previously there was not a difference in the film to go on those plastic trays. And there now is a different product that is supposed to go on them if they're being frozen. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Interesting. And they raised the price on it. <laughs> Hence the better covering. <laughs> um, let's see here. Kristen, um, we have never had issues with the Oliver trays ceiling. Uh, we did have to use the plastic trays for a while this summer when Oliver was short on the fiber trays. Seems like that was going around. Um, Kim Losey, plastic Oliver trays we used, and that was all we could get and hated them. Made the bags way too heavy. Um, Christy Cooley, could Guar help secure better pricing? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's something definitely we're going to think about. Um, just bringing up this conversation is so interesting that, you know, um, what people are using and um, the pricing and all that. So, yes, we will definitely get on that. Oh, the chat's really... It's really happening today. Um, let's see, black three deep, 35 cents each. Black plastic was very hot to handle, interesting. The metal tins are, two, I think it says 0.248, but I don't know what that means if somebody wants to. Oh, sorry, plastic was 0.35. Um, does your caterer do all of the sealing with the olive trays or do you do it at the nutrition site? Anybody want to talk about that? Our caterers do do it, but we do have a site that does it as well. Kind of all over the place then on the board. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a different experience with the black ones. My staff actually liked them better, and they look better against the food. My staff prepared them, and that is our next order. Prefer, excuse me, my staff preferred them, and that is our next order. We do not freeze them, however. That's Darby. Thank you, Darby. Um, Christy, again, the Oliver would be nice for food presentation, but cost is a barrier at this time. Kim Losey, our food comes bulk <clears throat> and we package them into the trays. Uh, Barb, thank you for answering both. Kristen, our food comes in bulk and we dish it up and seal it. And also Janine, our food comes in bulk as well. So thank you for all your comments. That's great. Good conversation about those. Yeah. Chippewa County um, has five different food vendors and most of them, let's see, three of them, the three of the caterers seal them, and then um, one has brings it bulk. The nursing home brings it bulk to Cornell, and she seals them. And we are now moving because Bloomer went from 18 Meals on Wheels um, participants to now we're up to four routes, so I think we're up to 50. And so we will now be getting the bulk from Main Street Cafe, and um, our staff is in the middle of learning how to seal them. So I want to give a shout out to Barron County. <laughs> for letting our staff come up there to um, um, observe how the whole system works. So I know we're excited to be sealing the meals ourselves at Bloomer. So you're, how nice, that's a really good idea. So you guys are working together. Um, I love that. Darby, the black plastic ones are oven safe and recyclable for those who may not know. Thank you for sharing. We use Heidi Russell, we use only Oliver trays and the caterer is in charge of, of filling, sealing and packing into our coolers heat containers. We had used the tr tin trays in the past and they had kept heat so well, but they are not earth friendly. So thank you again. That's good, good stuff to learn. I've even learned some good things here. Thank you. And I'd, I'd like to quickly just get back to Dawn Jorstead from La Crosse real quick, if I could, Lori, because um, I know she's got to pop off here, but just wondering, Dawn, if you could kind of just give us an overview. Of what? Of how you keep your food safe. Is it, is it the... Um, packaging, I mean, have you got the equipment down? Is it your volunteer education or, you know, pay driver education? What did you do to keep those temperatures safe? Well, to be honest with you, I rode from the caterers in our van mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I did the whole journey. Yep. Um, and I was taking temps at each site, um, kind of figuring out where we were faulting. Um, so what I ended up buying um, from the Meals on Wheels, yeah, the Meals on Wheels store, sorry, I got an envelope and I just got to open it. Um, I purchased their, um, 
heating unit. Um, it's an electrical heating unit. They're gray. They're like a heating pad and it plugs into the cigarette lighter. And with our um, soft sided bags and we put those micro core two of those hot packs in each one besides having the heater in there. Um, what we do is our our caterers package up all the meals and then they ride on our truck in our um, sealed heated units. When they get to their our sites within 15 minutes basically of us getting there, they're um, divided out for all the routes and between those micro core pads and that hot heating unit when it plugs into the cigarette lighter we've we've finally gotten it figured out where our temps are good by the end of the route now today we had fish and i will be honest with you by the end of the route our fish got down to 136 degrees i don't know why did fish the driver leave the bit what's travel. that i don't think fish travels well does it I mean, it doesn't did the driver not close the bag all the way yeah. did you know what i don't know but yeah. um i did a lot of ride-alongs and actually with this covid stuff it really kind of helped because we had so many multiple routes going out i could go all over <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I think I think if if there's one thing that the Guar Nutrition team could you know say is that it's really about observing, right, Don? I mean, it's really about being out there and watching how the meals are being packed, how they're being sent from the caterer, how they're being uh, packaged after being cooked. Um, you know, other volunteers do they need education on on temping? Um, you know, are the forms correct? All these different things. So. I really appreciate your your insight and in sharing that with us to with us today because I think that's a really important piece is to make sure that as a nutrition coordinator there that you're really involved in that process because I feel like that's where you can see and spot a lot of the things that may be causing the problem at the end. Thank well, you, Don. Yeah, we were having issues with our temperatures coming from the cater as well, so I had asked them to take their temperatures before they left. And by the time they got to us, compared to what they had and what we had, the temperatures dropped like 40 to 50 degrees. Mm. So I was talking to um, Sue, who's in charge of our caterer, and she, I asked her, they were using a surface thermometer instead of the STEM one. So then I did education with our drivers on making sure that they were also calibrating the thermometers right how to do it to make sure that dimple is in the food not above it so it was just an extra little heads up on what we can do to help that i just would strongly suggest um as i'm sure all of you have had new people coming on especially with um, all this pandemic and all that stuff it really was eye-opening to see little things that were tr we had trained everybody on, but just with all the new people that had come in, little things were falling off, and we just we just needed to know that we um, just retrain people and just re. Um, it, there were a lot of simple little things that we were able to fix just from me riding in the van. I mean, so. Um, and yeah, they, Amelia, they oh, I'm sorry. Go they're ahead, just Don. always glad to. They're always glad to see you, and when you're out there actually doing some of the stuff, I think you gain a lot of respect from them. You do. Good point, Don. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, I hope that helped everybody. I think it's good insight. Lori. Oh, well, I was just gonna. Um, Amelia also could talk to doing the uh, education and she did the I believe the PowerPoint which so we'll provide a link for and how again just like what Don said what a difference it made with people knowing that that you care that it's something you know just re-education. Amelia are you on? Yeah um, we did do our PowerPoint and I think the food temps is something our drivers have always been aware of and known that they had to 
be careful, but we did do that PowerPoint training with them and it helped them, I think, become more aware of the importance of the food safety and why we have to keep it safe. And just so they're more mindful of making sure that food is safe. So let's say opening up the bag and shutting it right away and making sure it's zipped and even temping uh, to make sure that they temp properly just so we get accurate temperatures as well when they are doing those temp test testing for those temps. Perfect, thank you. And Amelia, I just have a quick question for you. It's Jean. Did you, so then did you, was it a matter of just the form that they were using is, or is it more of the actual educating of them um, as far as the, you know, the temperatures went? So we did, I did update a form for them because we weren't necessarily doing our temping our frozen meals and also some of our cold foods. So we, when we did that training for them, just to over, go over everything they should be doing. We also started utilizing that new form as well. So it went hand in hand. So it's helpful to do at the same time. Great, thank you. Um, Michelle wants to know, is the PowerPoint available on, Guar, on the GOAR website? I do not believe yet it is out there. I know there were some questions about the, the SharePoint part it was in, but um, we can definitely put that out there and also ask your nutrition, GOAR nutrition person, and they can send it directly to you as well. But we'll get that out on the web probably in the next week or so. Thank you for asking. Kristen, question about the Sterno heater hot plate. Is it easy to clean? Ooh, good question. Anybody want to help Kristen out with that one? Sue, it looks like it is. It looks like the material is very uh, easy to wipe off and clean and sanitize. Yes, it is. It's like a, um, I want to say like a shiny, slick, um, I, I don't know what, it's like a, <laughs> maybe like a nylon or something. It's, um, very easy. You could definitely sanitize it and wipe it easily. Thank you, Sue. Sure. Hey, Lori, I have a quick thing on um, taking temps on test trays that Pierce County discovered. Um, so okay. what they did is they had uh, older drivers, you know, as most of us do, and at the end of the route when they were doing the test tray, um, it was a little thing like Don was talking about, but what they do is when they're taking the temp of the food at the end, they call Lena, um, who works in the office, and as they temp each food, they verbally tell Lena what that temperature was. And that little thing seemed to make a big difference um, because otherwise, you know, as soon as you take the tray off, we know that the heat's going to go down pretty quick. And they were finding that just the time between, you know, writing down the temp and then getting back to the next food item, um, was making a difference. So I thought that was great. Great idea. Thanks, Pam. Um, Sabrina, back to the sternal plate real quick. Sabrina was wondering um, if it gets so hot that it would be possible to damage the bags. Um, we use the sterno insulated bags also, so I, I don't know. I mean, they haven't damaged the bags. And I don't know if you use other bags, if it might. I, I That I don't know, sorry. You could check with the vendor on that, maybe when you when you ask about them, um, you know, which bags they're, they accommodate. Sounds good. Um, we have another thing. So another thing that we noticed when everybody was sending in their temperatures is we had a lot of people using a lot of different forms and we were thinking it in Pam's PowerPoint, once you get that, there is a form in there that looks like it would fit for most people. Now, I know everybody is a little different, but I was wondering if Cassie could share her screen for us and show her, show her, she did a really nice like stickers on there to show everybody how to do it. So as you're training your staff, if you are thinking about changing or updating your temperature sheet, because it was some people like they did a whole month on one sheet and you know they didn't capture everything that way. So that's too much. So this way it goes just one week at a time. So Cassie's gonna show us this. This is from the PowerPoint and you can download this, but, and then she put little like how to train on that. So we can send that out to you also. So Cassie, you wanna explain those for us? Sure. So um, 
just going off of this form here, which is a fillable form, they can just um, fill in on the computer all your weekly menu. Um, there's a attached, um, I guess, instruction on how to fill it out. So it would be um, just reviewing the form, um, what each column is for, um, who fills it out, or what time do you fill it out, um, and then also any comments about the meal, um, and then that, and then it goes to how the back works um, in regard because it's a two-sided form. I'm about how many meals um, were congregate, how many were home delivered, just for um, reference, and then also what happened with leftover food, and then it this um, instructional guideline kind of goes through. Um, if somebody had filled it out, this is what they'd fill out on the computer. And then um, there's like handy little keep in minds like the thermometer needs to be checked weekly for accuracy. Um, write down every food item, even if you don't take the temperature. For example, ca canned foods, um, fruit that is served directly from the can does not need to be temped as long, it count, as, long as it's um, packaged direct from the can. So just quick little reminders. It's a handy tool, so if you are going to use um, like this specific form, it would give you um, something, a tool that you could give to your worker on um, what uh, they could fill out um, and what portions they would fill out. So yeah, any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And Cassie, do you just want to say maybe who you, because I think you're kind, you're fairly new to the network, and um, you know because we don't meet and have meetings, it'd be nice if you could just. Just introduce yourself and, and tell them who you're with and, and what your position is. Thank you. OK, <laughs> um, I'm Cassie. I work for Great Lakes Intertribal Council um, as the Technical Training Assistance Center Program Director. And so I provide um, OAA technical assistance to the um, tribal aging units. And um, so I just started in this role maybe a month or two ago. And so as I'm learning, I'm finding different um, ideas or ways that I can help as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, very tech savvy. I will say she's I, if I need help, I can go to her. So it, <laughs> it's wonderful. Does anybody else have something special that they want to bring up? Do they have a special struggle that they're working with? Lori, there's a couple things in chat if you don't mind. Okay. Um, thank you, okay. Cassie. This is for Cassie. Do you find that this would still be usable without having access to a computer? Um, yeah, so what you could do as the program um, director is you could either just have them printed out. So what my idea was is to have them um, have like the program director, or whoever has access to the computer, maybe once a week fill out this form um, like on a Friday and put in the menu items um, for the next week printed out. Or if you didn't have access to the computer, just print out blank ones and just have a whole, you know, 52 of them for every day of the <laughs> the year. I mean, every week of the year. And then um, and then they could just hand write them in. Um, if you didn't want to fill in this part, it prints just fine without the blue. So, yeah, I think that it still could work. Everybody's different. So. Thank you so much. Um, and then Michelle, are we required to record every day? I thought it was once per month. Okay, Michelle, are you talking about home delivered meal temp trays at the end of the route? I think that's what you're talking about. So we recommend that you temp them every month. The, the policy actually says every three months. Um, yes, oh, thank you. Okay, good, I was like, whew. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so we were talking about, um, I think you're talking about the home delivered meal test trays. So yes, um, we recommend once a month, if not more, like right now with the um, the cold and things like that, and maybe if you're having some issues, um, but otherwise um, the policy is once every three months, but definitely, um, you know, the more the better. So thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to thank Cassie too for those forms and I thought she did such a beautiful job with the instructions and she was so great because and gracious she said if I don't understand it because she's new and so she was looking at it with not a dietitian not a food service eye so I appreciated that about it so much so thank you thank you Cassie the instructions are beautiful and 
Cassie, one more question too from um, the chat group. Have you found that this is simpler than previous forms, which is probably hard for you to answer because you haven't been here, but you did see the previous forms that were being used. Right. Um, so I've had mixed reviews from the um, aging units. Some of them do not prefer it because it's two sided. Um, the only reason why I decided to make it two sided is because for like ease of space to use it. So I know um, a few of the aging units like it and have been using it. Um, but yeah, because it's double sided and maybe um, they don't have a double sided printer, it wasn't a better choice for them. So um, yeah, which would you know make sense. So yeah, I mean, I guess they kind of, I just wanted to make more space to write because I think a big thing that I was seeing was there wasn't a lot of, like everything was kind of crunched together. And so we couldn't really see the important data, so. Thank you, Darby wants to say great job, Cassie. Thank you. Thanks, Darby. Lori, I'll send it over to you. Okay. Well, we like I said, we have a few minutes left, and if anybody, I was talking to Jennifer this week. I don't know if you want to talk about some of your struggles. Um, everybody's got different ones, so it's nice to hear. But if anybody wants to speak up about something they want to, um, a struggle that they're having, we haven't heard a lot about cold temperatures. But remember, um, so we use ice packs on those. Make sure that you know you keep a lot of those in the freezer. So Jennifer, how? Hi, how are things going up there with you? Yeah, so I was talking to Lori about the temps uh, recently, and I guess I have a few questions for other um, areas because we have we have unpaid volunteers that deliver all the meals, and I just wonder, um, you know, we don't have plugins for our any of our things, so I just find that that might be a little bit um, difficult with our drivers. Um, you know, not everybody's going to have the same vehicle and same, air, you know, way to plug in stuff. So I wonder, um, I guess my biggest question is, is when people are delivering, when their volunteers are delivering, are they checking the temps when they deliver that last meal or is it when they bring it back to the main kitchen that it gets that last temp? Yeah, it should be. Well, to answer your question, it should be at the last stop. So it's at the, you know you wouldn't want to bring it back and then yeah. temp it at the at the delivery site. So just as if you were you know that was a real person that you were serving a meal to, and it was the last the last stop on your route is how I kind of remember it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah, because that's not necessarily that we've been actually having them bring it back to the kitchen, and we've been doing the temp. Um. You know, it depends on who we give it to. I, you know, I guess that's a little a little bit more training on a bunch of our different drivers, and especially if it's not a routine driver that's dr delivering. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. how often are you how often are you temping, Jennifer? Because you know, maybe you could just say a day you want to temp is a day that you know you have somebody who's trained well and that is comfortable with it. Whereas maybe somebody who you know you're like he's a good driver, but maybe I don't want him temping. You could have somebody on a different day temp his route if he's not working a certain day. Do you temp once a month? Yeah, we do, do it once do a quarterly. Month. Once a month. Okay. Okay. Um, there's some things in chat. Um, well, go, Kayla. Good question. How often do you have meetings like this? I'm new. Thank you. Welcome, Kayla. Um, we do have peer sharing calls. Um, what once every couple four weeks five weeks we've been having them more uh, during the pandemic and then this was just the, the talking temps was just something that we as a nutrition team um felt was important to share and have everybody kind of on the same page so you will definitely hear about these meetings from um your guar rep um which is me and um as we move forward and if you have any ideas for meetings feel free to share those um kimberly swanson the guidance says it can be done brought back to the site if no other option um unfortunately the temps reflect out of range yes it will be out of range if it's brought back to the site um send us zip bag oh here's a good idea send us this is kim losey send a zip bag with all the supplies in it including sealed fork and knife so they can enjoy the meal if they would like oh <laughs> yeah that's a good idea that's nice yeah very very nice and I think too, Lori, we just wanted to remind people that um, 
that, you know, this is not something we're going to be doing as a, a, the Guar Nutrition Team once a year anymore um, or at your assessments. We're actually probably going to be doing this once every couple months. Um, so just, you know, asking for them ran randomly until we can kind of get a feel that everything's good and your questions have been answered and that, you know, we're working with you and things are going good. Um, so just an FYI. Um, Kathy, thank you, Kathy. My apologies. The cost of the Oliver food trays prior to their price increase of February 2021, two compartments, 26 cents each. Oh, a three compartment deep is 29 cents each. <clears throat> a three compartment shallow is 27 cents each and a three compartment plastic is a 31 cents each as well. Thank you for sharing that, Kathy. Hey, Jean, how many trays come in a case of Oliver? Um, I thought it was like two. I mean, I think it depends on how you order it. Um, we did not use Oliver in my program. Um, we actually, the restaurant had their these awesome containers that we used, um, but we didn't use the Oliver packaging system. I feel like it's 600. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm getting some answers though here. Let me just take a look here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I can't keep up. It's great though. Um, let's see here. Uh, Don George said 800. Thank you, Don. 600 shallow and 800 deep. 800 and plastic is 560. Michelle says it depends on if it's fiber trays or plastic. So good point. Good question, Pam. Thank you. I have a question since we are talking about Oliver. Have you guys gotten the new um, rolls, gigantic rolls of film? Um, do they have your caterers mentioned it or anything like that? Um, it was kind of tricky with our smaller units and those large rolls of film uh, for sealing to get it to go. It didn't roll as smoothly. Have you guys experienced that or not? Hi, Dawn. This is Rhonda from ERC Central Wisconsin. We have used those larger rolls since they became available. And I haven't heard anyone say they were tricky. So I, I wish I could um, commiserate with you, but they somehow have been making it work um, successfully. It took and a little just, bit. Yeah, it took a little bit, but uh, it was, I, I don't know. I just, um, they're like gigant, huge. <laughs> They really are. They're big. Um, I, I think I think our staff appreciate not having to change them out regularly. But um, isn't that something like five it. rolls of film on one now? Oh wow! Um, I forget what the ratio is. It's they're big. They're really big. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks we figured it out, but I just was wondering if other people were having the issue because. It seems like with the bigger pieces, the bigger rolls, we're wasting a little bit more. Anybody else want to comment on that? Um, Jenny says, is anyone using the new Oliver biodegradable and do they leak? Do not leak. Thank you. Somebody put in the chat. Um, Cumulosi deep. We buy plastic separately. They do not leak. I just want to go back up here real quick. Lisa um, Waring, excuse me. Can we get a copy of the temp log that she was talking about for the 52 weeks? Um, I think that's I think you're talking about the one that Cassie was um, talking about. And yes, you can. Um, we should have that as soon as we get the minutes sometimes next week and we'll have those links. Um, Kathy M, if anyone is having trouble with the film adhering to the tray, we were told by Oliver to make sure to clean the inside of the machine with rubbing alcohol. One side of the film has the adhesion and this builds up inside the machine and needs to be cleaned with rubbing alcohol. <clears throat> we clean with hot soapy water and then the alcohol. Thank you, Kathy, for that tip. I have a question about the forms. Is it a requirement to document um, what food was wasted or where the leftovers went? 
The reason I added that to the form, and I, my apologies, I don't have chapter eight with me, um, but there is something in chapter eight that talks about where, uh, and I think I put in the reference, um, that we need to track or be aware of the food waste. Um, and my apologies, is Sarah, are you on? Otherwise, I can add that to the we, notes with that we reference. Can, we can check that policy and um, put that in the notes for you um, and follow up with you for sure. This is Sarah. I'm on. I I'm checking because I don't even remember. <laughs> so I, let me check. Thank you, Sarah. Well, I, I just we, have a question for everybody um, real quick. If you can answer in the chat before we all um, are leaving, if you feel like this meeting was uh, good for you, if if you found some information, I really think um, we've had a lot of people contribute and that was absolutely excellent. And B, would you like to have another one on this topic or would you like the next time to go on to something else? So if you want to do talking temps again, we'd be happy to do that until you know we can get everybody on board and have temps where they are. But let us know what you need so that we can help you. Yes, yes, as they're coming through on the chat. Yes, more information on talking temps. Um, yeah, this is great. Keeping talking temps. Yes, please. Yes, I enjoyed this topic. Excellent. Yes. Um, keep talking temps, please. That's cute. Um, I can't keep up with them. I'm trying, you guys. Uh, I would like a copy of the form discussed. Of course, we will attach those to the notes. Um, yes, yes, and yes, please, but not on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, know. I wish I'm we could do that. like a, a happy hour one or, or we could do a walking yoga or something, you know, right? On a, uh, yeah, on a Friday to get us going. Yeah, can, can we talk about packaging items? How are we packaging them? Um, and it, oh, here's a great one. It will keep us accountable as well. And that's kind of the whole point is to, you know, just bring up things that your peers are doing um, and, and, you know, really spark the conversation with your own program. So, of course, we as a the nutrition team appreciate everything you've done um, to, you know, to, to get it to this point. So I know that's a lot of hard work out there and it's greatly appreciated. And we all want to do better. Thank you all. That's a that's a nice, nice saying. Um, Kayla, prefer the afternoon. Talk more about the process of temping. Ooh, example stories and scenarios. I like that. Um, suggest pick a section of chapter eight for review. Great suggestions. Cost of packaging. Um, packaging is a great one. Sarah Koenig, I'm not seeing anything in chapter eight regarding a requirement to track leftovers on the temp log. So I believe that's it's not. I'd yes, it's not on the temp log. There is a section and I'll have to find it. My apologies, but no, you don't have to track it on the temp log. It, um, it just says you need a system in place to track something and I'll find that and we can continue chatting. But thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I'm not and seeing I that. Just... OK, I'm, I'm not seeing that sorry. either, Pam, but. I was just typing in the chat and I'm not typing fast enough, but. It is definitely a good idea to keep track of leftovers from a fiscal perspective to make sure that you're not ordering more than you need or getting, you know, more than you need and paying for that from the caterer. So, um, or, yeah. And maybe that's a whole other discussion call. Yeah. Right, right. So I have another. Just, um, I had a question real quick. I wanted to grab in here. Um, somebody was having problems with with their cold temp. And their desserts. They were making them that morning, and then they were never cold enough, right, to send out. So I've had that happen in my food service operations in past places. And sometimes we would make the cold entree the day before, so that have enough time to cool down. Um, you can put it in the refrigerator and then by the next day it would be good. So we're always working a day ahead on anything like that that wouldn't temp good. Um, there have been times where we actually took things off of the menu because we couldn't get the temp we wanted. Um, there had been times where like the milk was not temping right, so we put it in the freezer for 20 minutes before we took that out. So I'm working with food service for a long time. There's usually an answer. You just have to play with it a little bit. So 
try this and try that and use more ice and you know like some, some caterer would bring it and then we'd put on new micro cores that we had either out of the freezer or in um, already heated up so that would get a fresh heat or fresh cooling and um, you know it just play with it so just some ideas thanks Lori okay um, anything else in the chat? Otherwise, we're going to wind it up because it's um, Friday afternoon. Yeah, and there's some chat. There's some chat questions, but I can definitely just respond here. So um, I know we want to be courteous of everybody's time because we know how busy you are. Um, so examples of issues or positives. Yep, I'd like to see if it would be possible to receive a WAN member discount. Great, I'll write that down, Kathy. Those are all um, good things to check on. Okay, happy Friday, everybody. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, happy Friday. Yeah, have a great weekend, be safe. Thank you, thank you Guar. Bye-bye. Yep.